country only got fair wages, fair hours, safety by striking. That it's never come from the top down. It's never going to come from the top down. All right, actress Susan Sarandon and other famous faces hitting the pavement with fellow actors to support the SAG after strike. Yep, and here to talk about the strike, how long it could last, and if it could affect consumers is Brett Lang, executive editor at Variety. Good morning to you. Thanks so much for coming on the show. We want to know, on Saturday night, there was a red carpet movie premiere for Disney's Haunted Mansion, the first since the SAG after strike began. So are you surprised that the studio went ahead with knowing the actors wouldn't be in attendance and use, like, Mickey characters? I, I mean, I'm, I'm somewhat surprised, but I, this is going to be a situation that a lot of studios face because these talks um, really did break down, and it doesn't look like they're going to resume again for at least a few weeks because tensions are running so high. So... If you have a major movie or television show that's set to premiere in the next couple of months, uh, your red carpet may look a lot like the one uh, for Haunted Mansion. Okay, so that, that brings me to the deadline, though, for the strike, which moved multiple times, right? And it seemed that almost, I think it was when our initial reporting, that the strike was going to be averted. And then we all woke up to the news that, of course, it wasn't. So what happened? What was the breakdown? Well, I think there were a number of things that uh, seemed to be a bridge too far for the studios. Uh, one was sharing viewership data. Um, companies like Netflix and Disney um, really didn't want to share a lot of information about how many people were viewing content that's made for streaming. Uh, there were also some issues about residuals or royalties that actors get for their films or shows, particularly when they go to these streaming platforms like Netflix, which they say can be you know, pennies, uh, whereas in the past that was a really steady uh, living. Um, studios weren't willing to raise those as high. And then there's this issue of artificial intelligence. Um, how will it be used? Does it mean that people's likenesses can be replicated and used kind of in perpetuity for a small fee? Um, artificial intelligence seems to have been a very contentious issue in these talks. So the movie companies are basically saying that the actors are being greedy, but the actors themselves are saying, wait a minute, the big movie heads are making hundreds of millions of dollars. Is there wiggle room here? What could the movie companies be giving the actors to get production back on set? I, I mean, there's always wiggle room, right? And somebody's going to have to reach a compromise. But I think right now, um, there's going to have to be some kind of cooling off period. Because if you listen to people like Fran Drescher or Susan Sarandon, um, you know, in the clip you just played, there's a lot of very raw feelings right yeah. now. So I'm not even sure that people are really eager to talk at the moment. Yeah, I mean, but that goes back to the question I had. Like, it seemed like it was all going according to plan. And these are big things for it to suddenly collapse, right? It's not like the residual thing came out of nowhere. So what, for the consumer, does this actually mean, right? So for the folks who are looking for, the actors and actresses who are looking for those higher residuals from, say, Netflix or streaming, are we going to see streaming costs go up to kind of accommodate that? They may, right? Or the other thing is there could be less content so that studios save money by producing fewer shows and fewer movies. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, a lot of these entertainment companies aren't doing very well right now. Their stocks are down. There's a lot of um, skepticism about the profitability and economic viability of streaming. So I think in the, uh, you know, in the short term, you'll probably see uh, fewer shows get produced and you may see um, you know, Netflix and other uh, streaming services raise their price if the cost of making yeah. programming what, uh, rises. What does the fall look like, right? Because it's not only streaming, but broadcast television shows premiere usually in the fall. And without the writers and without actors, what's the fall look like? You're going to see a lot more reality television because wow. it's not um, under these, um, these different contracts. So I think you're going to see a lot more reality programming. And then as you get into 2024 and 2025, you may see fewer of these blockbuster movies or movies that get delayed because they can't be completed due to the strike. All right, Brent, thanks so much for breaking things down for us this morning. We'll see how long this lasts. Yeah, to be continued. Keep us posted, okay?